Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the topic of protective styling has become quite a controversial topic within the natural hair community. To style or not to style, how to style properly, it's not even growing your hair. Honestly, I don't know what to think about the natural hair community at this point. Those who follow me know that I am a huge fan of protective styling. I've gone from this to this using protective styling. But let's take a moment to answer the real question. Do you need protective styling? I mean, if we're gonna go off of technicalities, then the answer would be no. There are plenty of women who are able to grow their hair without using protective styling, and hey, good on you. Wish I could be you, but I'm not, I'm me. Regardless, all of us are protecting our hair in some special way. I feel like as long as you're being careful and you're listening to your own hair's needs, then you shouldn't have a problem. If you're in pain, probably shouldn't do it. If you're seeing white bumps, you probably shouldn't do it. If you have to pay somebody, then, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money, but you're the ones who told me that you wanted to work on your financial freedom. So if you are going to use protective styling, what are our options? Wigs. I have probably owned maybe like two or three wigs in my entire lifetime. Um, and I, for one, have just decided that I am not a fan. First off, I have to cornrow my hair to even fit it under the wig, and I can't cornrow to save my life. Secondly, they itch a lot. Thirdly, they're super, super hot. I live in central Texas, so when I have to cover my hair, the entirety of my head, as well as like a piece of my forehead in 100 degree heat, it's just a no. But if you're able to bypass all of that and protect your hair, good on you. Braids and twists. I've done braids and I have done twists. I tried doing braids once when I first went natural. I was trying to use like added hair. That's a story for another video. If you do want to hear that story and how much of a train wreck it was, just leave a comment and let me know. Maybe I'll make a video about it. I've decided that not using extra hair and just using my own is a lot more helpful. And I also believe that I'm just able to retain much more moisture this way and it's a lot less to deal with. So that's what I do. Gel. So this is one of those ones that can be a protective style, but it also doesn't have to be a protective style. Um, there are some YouTubers who are growing their hair with wash and goes and just using gel, especially on the ends of their hair to kind of like freeze everything in place. I made a video a little bit ago about wash and goes and whatnot and how to like how I'm trying to create the perfect one for me. So far, I've not been able to find growth from these things, but hey, if, if you do, then you do you. Do what works. Bun. I, for as far as for growing my hair, I do love buns. I usually put my twists my twists down and then put them in a bun. I don't put my twists down and then in a bun. I make twists out of my hair and then I put those twists in a bun. I wore buns for the majority of 2019, which is how I was able to grow my hair in the first place. There are some women who just take their hair and put it up in a bun and they grow it like that. I can't do that. I wake up with a bird's nest on top of my head. So again, if you're able to do it, you do you. Scarves. I experimented with a lot of scarves, I think within my, my first two years of being natural. I honestly think at the time I had more scarves than I had pairs of shoes. I had more scarves than I had textbooks. I was a freshman, sophomore in college, by the way. That was a fun time. Learning how to tie them was a little bit difficult at first, especially if you weren't using the right kind of scarf. There are some scarves that I was wearing where I was literally taking like this big wool scarf that's supposed to be for winter time. And I'm like, hey, I can fit this around my head. Why not? I'm not doing that again. I don't know what these other YouTubers are saying about how protective styling doesn't work and how you're protective styling wrong. I just say if it's too tight, it's not working. If it's too tight, it's not working. Listen to your hair. I personally feel like your hair is like a baby. If you just listen to your hair, it'll tell you what it needs. Unfortunately, not everybody is patient enough to listen to the needs of others. So now is the time. Hey, it's the beginning of a new year. It can be your new year's resolution. Let's be more present and be more cognizant about what our hair is actually telling us. You know what? While we're here, let's just go ahead and debug some myths, okay, in the natural hair community. Myth number one, you need to use extra hair to protect a style. No, no you don't. Every protective style that I've done where I use extra hair ended up being a disaster. Unless I was doing individual crochet braid or crochet locks, those were not a disaster. Everything before I learned how to do that was absolutely awful. Not to mention, what's the whole point of trying to make our routine simple if you're just gonna go out and buy added hair that you're gonna throw away so you have to buy more? That's a whole lot of wasted money. If you really feel the need to cover your hair, that's why scarves is on the list that I just used. And so is wigs, I forgot about that for a second. Number two, protective styling is the only way to grow your hairs. No. we. <laughs> 
we've already seen this myth debunked over and over and over again. My favorite, as you guys already know, is Later Ivy. And that's why I started off this video saying, if you want to be technical, the answer is no. But that, I feel like that just answers for hair in general. What does your hair need? I don't know. I'm not you. I'm here to inspire you, not tell you what to do. I'm not your doctor or your mother. But if you're going to take time to play with your hair, make sure that you give your hair time to adjust. I say two months is a pretty good time. If you don't see any significant positive or negative change within two months, I say drop it. If you see significant negative change before that two months mark, drop it. There's no point in trying to do something to your hair for a whole two months when after three days, your hair feels like you've been washing with Ajax. Number three, you can only keep it in for two weeks at a time. No, no, you don't have to do that. Granted, if you're going to keep your hair, I'm not talking to you. Now I will say this, if you are going to keep your hair in a protective style longer than two weeks, just make sure that your hair is properly protected and um, what's the word? I forgot every, I suddenly forgot how to speak English. Prepared, that's the other word. Make sure your hair is prepared to actually be in a protective style for such a long period of time. Whether it be, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month. There are some people who go a couple of months. I am not one of those people. How you keep your hair, hands out of your hair for three months, <sighs> that's beyond me, I couldn't do that. I like playing with this too much, just, so is protective styling good or bad? I feel like it can be extremely helpful as long as you do it correctly. I also think it's extremely important to do your research and to stay inspired. So I made this video on how I personally stay inspired on my natural hair care journey. I believe in you.